it is my wish and it's my challenge to you and to others out there to build me a robot. <laughs> yes, that's right, a robot. It sounds almost insane, but as a child and even today, I've always wanted and would love to have a robot. The, ma the main thing the robot will be doing is picking up the objects I drop, such as a pen, knife, fork, and or my phone. This robot will become my hands and legs. The first time Joanne came to my attention would have been maybe early 2012 when she um, uh, forced Andy Kenny to back down on some disability cuts and uh, she made an impression then I suppose as uh, not your ordinary teenager in, in many different ways. But it was April 2012 when she was invited to address a conference in New York, a, a UN organized conference about women in technology that she really got my attention because that's an area I'm really passionate about is trying to encourage more women into science, engineering and technology. Uh, and during that uh, speech, which was a pretty impressive speech in itself, she issued a challenge to the world to build me a robot, to be my extra limb, to uh, help me in my day-to-day -day life. And I felt that was something we could do also. So at that stage, we uh, tried to get in touch with the family. And eventually that happened in November 2012 when uh, we met up with Stephen, who's Joanne's brother. And uh, we outlined some ideas there and we agreed that we'd start to explore the possibilities of getting involved. So we first um, sat down and talked to Joanne in some detail in January uh, 2013. So we went down to uh, visit the family and spent a day down in Mill Street um, going through some ideas and talking to Joanne and getting her uh, feedback and vision of what she would like and uh, explaining some concepts that we had and getting her feedback on them. So the first stage in that was really getting detailed um, information from Joanne and figuring out exactly what was needed and what was required and coming up with a concept of uh, how we would uh, achieve that functionality. So um, that would have uh, been the initial stage of the project. But to go beyond that, uh, we were going to need some funding to actually start building real prototypes and testing uh, you know, real robots. And we received a generous donation then through the United Nations, the ITU, that's the International Telecommunications Union, um, donated 50,000 euros uh, towards the project. And that was uh, enough to, uh, to begin the process of building a prototype. When we were designing this, the, the first thing as engineers we needed to do was realise we were designing something that wasn't to work in the lab. And in this instance, it's to work in a house. And I guess the, the, kind of the primary consideration we needed to have here was that this needs to work with people and it needs to be able to navigate the kind of environments that you know, Joanne navigates. And these are typically kind of hard floors and again, you need to be able to move in and out of doorways and things like that. So we couldn't make something that was too small. It had to be, um, you know, have the ability to kind of interact with Joanne as well as be able to perform the kind of tasks. So the design we, we elected was, it's quite anthropomorphic in, in, in form. So it bears a pretty close resemblance to a human being. And um, you can see that, it, you know, it has a head, it has a, a torso, um, it has two arms and it has two legs. And the, the, the shape the legs take, again, is very similar to a person's where you might have a thigh uh, and a kind of a shin or a shank. We chose to use wheels, uh, and that was largely because it, it makes sense from an engineering perspective, but also because Joanne is in a wheelchair. Uh, the kind of locations in the house and even outside the house uh, that Joanne needs to go, uh, this robot will be able to go pretty efficiently with her. Um, because you know we were building this uh, for use in a, in a real kind of human-occupied environment where you know the people who are going to be using this may not have any engineering experience, we also had to make sure that the design uh, was friendly. Uh, and, and you know aesthetically pleasing so that when people uh, come across it for the first time you know they're not threatened by it and in fact we've tried to design it in such a way that you know it will, it will engage positively with people and I think that um, even though this is the first iteration of it it's the first prototype I think we've succeeded in that most of the uh, feedback we've got so far is that you know uh, the predomin it predominantly is friendly like that so as we kind of continue working on this we, we really hope to continue to incorporate greater degrees of uh, social ability and you know the psychological aspect of its design is something that we're you know we're continuing to work hard on. So when we were designing the face what we wanted to do was we wanted to incorporate quite a, a high level of realism and so that when Joanne's interacting with it it'll be quite similar when she's interacting with people. So what we did one of the things we did here was to incorporate some general social cues. Uh, one of these to note is the, the way that the robot blinks. So what's happening here is the robot's uh, effectively working okay and to reflect that, it's blinking back at it. And if there's a problem, we've programmed it in such a way that it'll stop blinking. And it provides a very fast and uh, intuitive way for Joanne or anyone else who's using the robot uh, to know if the robot's all right or not. Uh, it can then transition to a happy face. Uh, it can go to a sad face. Um, if, for whatever reason, uh, the robot might get shocked or it, it, something might happen that it's not expecting, it can show a surprised expression. 
we were working to a very, very ambitious uh, timescale here because Steve and Joanne's brother was making a documentary um, which was due to be shown in October uh, the 6th, 2013. And this was uh, the end of May when we received confirmation of the funding. So that was an incredibly short um, timeline, which was um, you know, requiring us to be very ambitious, very focused, very hardworking, uh, and, uh, and very clever in what we did. But I was confident in, in the people here uh, that we had uh, a strong team that we were going to be able to put together. And I knew we had a lot of people who would give of their time and of their expertise. So uh, we took on that challenge knowing what we're going in, into, but, um, but happy to take on the challenge as we felt it was a really worthwhile project. It was quite a challenging project to start with um, and very ambitious, but I think uh, I knew the kind of people that we'd be working with and I was quite happy to, to help uh, take it on. Uh, one of the great things about working at Trinity as a student engineer is to, that you do get to work on quite a few projects during your time. But this is certainly the most challenging one and the one that was most applicable to the real world. Uh, there was a lot of work to get done in it, but I think even meeting uh, Joanne herself and have, seeing her personality and her huge ambition for life really kind of drove the team to get this project done in time and really try to do what, as much as we could for her, but also to contribute to robotics in general. I think we have built something that does that. I want to live an independent life just like you. I don't want to live in the shadow of others because I want to make my own journey in life. And I know if I'm given the chance, I can and will succeed. I know that there must be someone out there in the world who can do something like this to make life much easier. It would not just help me, but indeed others who are in similar situations. Life is about living, and let's face it, ladies, technology is not just a way of life, it's a way of living. <laughs>